This weekend, I was fortunate to be able to assist in the lab portion of Postural Restoration Institute's Myokinematic Restoration course in New York City. And this was actually the first seminar I took. I did it as a home study, and then it was the first or second seminar that I, live seminar that I took. And it was pretty amazing experience to help people in their, in their initial understanding of postural restoration or their initial attempt to understand postural restoration. And it made me think about what I know now, how I wish I had known then, which would have been impossible because it's been five years and it was a learn it's been a, an amazing learning experience. But if there were a couple of things that I had in mind back then that I know now, how my understanding could have, could have uh, occurred more easily. So the first thing is that patterns are not bad. So we have a left AIC pattern, which is the myokinematic restoration course, <clears throat> which talks about the left AIC pattern, which is a left pelvis that's rotated forward compared to the right side. Right? So it orients your, your entire pelvis to the right. That is not a bad thing as long as you're on your right foot. However, if the left AIC pattern doesn't reverse into a right AIC pattern so that your pelvis stays over to the right when it should be on the left or oriented to the left, that's the problem. So a left AIC pattern is not a problem. A left AIC pattern is only a problem if it never becomes, a, if it doesn't get the chance to, to turn off and the right AIC pattern, which should occur when you switch to the left, does not, is not allowed to occur. That's where the problem is. So you want to be alternating left AIC pattern, right AIC pattern, left AIC, right AIC. If it's just left AIC pattern, left AIC pattern, left AIC pattern, left AIC, that's where the problem is. That's where muscles are going to get overused and you're stuck. Okay, so you have a pelvis that's not rotating and everything gets messed up. Uh, number two, there are upper body influences on the pelvis. <clears throat> so if you can't get someone neutral through a hamstring or any of the exercises that you used, it's most likely that there's some sort of, A, if you're, you may not be doing the exercise correctly yet because it takes time to really learn how to do these exercises uh, correctly and teach them correctly. But there might be an upper body influence that is preventing the pelvis from repositioning. That happens quite often uh, if someone has a neck pattern, but that's way down the road. You'll have to do postural respiration first. In postural respiration, <clears throat> quite often the, uh, the right chest wall is too tight. It won't expand and it, it kind of throws off the mechanics of the pelvis. Number three, the importance of ligamentous muscle. <clears throat> I always understood it, but as I've gotten further into it, I realize the importance even more. If you've become pathological, it means your body has done something it shouldn't have done in order to get range of motion that it couldn't get. The two most pathological, uh, frequent pathological issues, well at least the first in the left AIC pattern is ligamental laxity of the left anterior hip capsule. So the ligaments in the front that go from the pelvis to the femur, they loosen in order to get range of motion that got cut off. When that happens, you have to use ligamentous muscle in order to strengthen those areas, and you have to use it early. So when you lose the, the anterior hip capsule ligaments, you need to use left anterior glute medius and left IC adductor along with the left hamstring and the left abs, but you really have to get those muscles uh, strong. You have to do it kind of right away. The other one would be if you have lax iliolumbar ligaments in the back, so kind of SI joint. If you have a history of SI joint issues, distinct possibility that you're going to have laxity. And in that case, you need to use the left psoas, or the, and I'm sorry, right psoas or right iliacus, uh, in order to help rotate the spine to the left. And I'm actually one of those people and I didn't even realize it. Uh, I got home on Sunday night, I had an idea, you know, I might have had that, but I've never really had anyone test me for it. And uh, I had to shift my weight over to the left, lift my right, right leg up, externally rotate, and it was incredibly difficult, uh, but I feel a difference already. 
I am now shifting into left AFIR a little bit easier. I feel, well, I feel it differently and I feel more sway to my hips as I walk, so it's pretty cool. The other one would be that all exercises are attempting, for the most part, to get you to the left. We are over, when we have a left AIC pattern, we are almost always going to be favoring our right side. And it doesn't matter whether you're righty or lefty. We're just going to be overusing the right side. So all the exercises are trying to get us to the left and activate muscles while you're on the left side. And whether you're in a seated position, standing position, side lying position, if we know the pelvis in the pattern is, more, is like this, all these exercises are going to reverse it. They're going to put you in a position in which your left pelvis has to come back and in into left AFIR and the right pelvis will come forward and out into right AFER because we're stuck, we're stuck like this. So the exercises, again, whether you're on your hands and knees or seated or a sideline, are going to move you or start you in a position like this or move you into this position. And that's important to realize. And just by shifting the pelvis, that will usually actually shift your upper body as well. And so a lower body exercise, ostensibly a left hamstring, if you are positioned correctly and you get full exhalation and you get abs involved, and we didn't talk, well actually, we did talk about abs, but the abs connect the lower and upper body and that exhalation is what gets the left abs, the left obliques into it. If you do it correctly, you're actually working on the upper body also. So a simple hamstring exercise could also undo someone's neck. It's pretty amazing, but that's really what it is. It's because the position that you're being put into is turning off the overactive muscles and better facilitating the muscles that we need to turn on to get out of the pattern, to get out of the left AIC pattern and get into a right AIC pattern. So those are just a couple points that I think I did not fully get in the beginning. I was looking at everything at just pelvis issue. I did not understand the upper body and I did not understand how every exercise is really a full total body exercise if done correctly.